Ave! I'm Eric B. Vogel, and I'm here to teach you how to play my new card game, Romans Go Home. In the game, players control an ancient Caledonian tribe, attacking the Roman fortifications along Hadrian's Wall, trying to capture the most valuable Roman forts for themselves. Each player takes a deck of nine warrior cards. Each warrior card deck has an identical set of warrior cards in it. Each warrior card has a numerical value it contributes to the player's total battle strength and a text effect which occurs only on the round in which the card is turned face up. There is also a deck of Roman fort cards. Each fort card has a victory point value and some have text effects that occur when the fort is won by a player. Shuffle this deck at the beginning of the game. Let's go through a full turn of a three-player game to demonstrate how the game is played and to introduce all the types of card in the game. At the beginning of each turn, deal a row of six face-up Roman fort cards from the fort deck. After you have dealt the cards, move the fort card with the highest positive victory point value to the rightmost end of the fort card row, and the fort card with the lowest positive victory point value to the leftmost end of the fort card row. Legion forts, which have a negative VP value, are not moved in this procedure. All players shuffle their warrior card decks and draw seven of their nine cards. They then play six of the seven cards in their hand face down in front of them. These cards are placed in order so that the first card they wish to play is on the leftmost end of their row, and the last card they wish to play is on the rightmost end of their row. The seventh card is discarded. Players now begin rounds of card play. There will be six rounds of card play in a turn. All players turn the leftmost face-down card of their card row face up. Text effects on the cards that were turned face up in the current round are then resolved. Then, the player with the highest total battle strength value will win the leftmost fort card in the row. On the first round of our example turn, Blue has revealed an Axemen card. The Axemen card has a value of 3. If the blue player was tied with another player who did not play an Axemen card, the Axemen card text effect would allow the blue player to win the fort. The blue player is not tied to win the fort this round, so the Axemen card has no effect. The yellow player has revealed a Queen card. The Queen card has a value of 2 and allows the yellow player to reorder her remaining face-down cards however she wishes. This can be very useful when a player's initial strategy doesn't seem to be working out. The red player has revealed a Swordsman card. The Swordsman card has no text effect, but its value of 5 gives the red player the highest total battle strength this turn, so red wins the current fort card. After a player wins a fort card, that player normally discards all her face-up warrior cards. The other players normally retain their face-up warrior cards for the next round. Fort card text effects can change these normal outcomes. However, the fort card that red wins this round is a one victory point fort with no text effect. In the second round, red reveals a pikeman card. The pikeman card has a value of six, but its text effect prevents the player from winning a fort on the round the pikeman card is revealed. The player's total battle strength is treated as zero for that round. The battle strength of the player's cards will go back to normal next round. The yellow player also reveals a pikeman card. The yellow player would have the highest battle strength this turn and have won the fort card, 6 from her pikeman card plus 2 from her queen card for 8. However, the pikeman effects prevents her from winning a fort this round. The fort will be won by the blue player, who revealed an archer's card with a value of 4, which, in addition to her previously played axeman card, gives her a total battle strength of 7. Normally, Blue would now discard all her face-up warrior cards. However, the text effect of the Archer's card allows her to retain the Archer's card face-up if she wins the fort on the round that she reveals it, so she just discards her Axeman card. The fort card she won is a Legion fort, which is worth negative two victory points. All the Legion forts have negative victory point values that subtract from a player's score. However, if one player can win three out of the four Legion forts in the deck, that player immediately wins the game as a sudden death victory. In the third round, red reveals an archer's card. Blue and yellow both reveal horseman cards, which have values of seven. Yellow has the highest total battle strength with 15 and wins the fort. 
The current fort is an unwary fort worth two victory points. When an unwary fort is won, the winning player may keep her lowest value face-up warrior card instead of discarding it. So the yellow player keeps her queen and discards the rest of her face-up cards. The horseman text effect requires that if a player does not win a fort on the turn that the player reveals the horseman card, that player must discard one face-up card. The blue player did not win the fort and so must choose to discard one of her face-up cards. She chooses to discard her horseman card. In the fourth round, blue and yellow both reveal chariots cards with a value of 9. The text effect of the chariots card dictates that if two or more players reveal chariots on the same round, all the chariot cards revealed that round must be discarded before battle strength totals are tallied. So blue and yellow both discard their chariots. The red player now has the highest total with 11. The red player revealed a druid card with a value of 1. When a player has won the fort the round that the druid card is revealed, the druid card allows the player to win any fort in the row instead of the leftmost fort card. The red player chooses to win the tax collector's fort worth 8 victory points. When the tax collector's fort is won, its text effect requires the winning player to discard one fort card. Red chooses to discard the one victory point mile fort she won in the first round and keep the eight victory point tax collector's fort. In the fifth round, blue and red tie, each with a battle strength of nine. No one wins the fort, and the current fort remains the current fort for the sixth and final round of the turn. In the sixth round, blue has the highest battle strength with 18. Blue wins the current fort, which is a signal fort worth four victory points. The signal fort effect forces all players to discard one face-up warrior card if they have any face-up warrior cards. In addition to this, the red player played a horseman this round without winning the fort and so must discard an additional face-up card. However, as this was the last round of play, these discards do not impact the game in any way. At the end of three turns, if no player has won the game by winning three Legion Forts, then the player with the highest total victory point value from her fort cards wins. If there is a tie, then the tied player with the single highest value fort card wins. The game takes 10 to 15 minutes to play with two to four players. The rules for the two-player game are slightly different, with one deck being used as a dummy player. The exact procedures for this are explained in the written rules. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the game.